Okay, so everyone's ready. Um, so David Fort is about to uh, talk about free RDS and, uh, well, the ex-friends apparently. <laughs> <laughs> he owns a consulting company uh, called Hardening. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So, okay, can you hear me? Yeah? Not much. Not? No, no, it's good. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. So don't be worried. It won't be about the love of free RDS. Just technical things. So first, uh, let me introduce myself. So yeah. So I'm French. I'm. Uh, I come from Rennes. Uh, yeah. I grew up with Linux and. Uh, Open sources, open source softwares. Uh, anyway, I, I, I'm really a, a stranger here because most I spent most of my career doing uh, IT security software. So yeah, I'm uh, my best conference. I'm more Black Hat than uh, XDC. So since two years, I'm uh, I'm, do, I'm I'm developing for FreeRDP. I'm working on FreeRDS since one year, and uh, yeah. You know me because, or you may not, because I, I wrote the RDP compositor. So this is the advertisement. So yeah, so the, I've been hired by Syncast Technologies for one year to work on free RDS. So they, are, they have paid uh, for one year working on that. They have invest manpower and uh, and they also allowed me to to come here and speak of what we've done during this last year. So, first in this talk, I will uh, I will talk about uh, how free RDS works. Then I will talk about uh, XRDS, which is uh, an X content provider for free RDS. And finally, I will talk about uh, free RDS Wayland Compositor. So let's start with free RDS. So free RDS is an, a pure RDP server. So perhaps. You don't know what is RDP, so RDP is a remote desktop protocol. It's a Microsoft thing. It's uh, yeah, it's quite old. When you read the spec, you really can feel that it was written in the 90s. So you have that that slow pass, which is really inefficient to send data. You have that fast pass that is more modern. You have plenty of ropes, raster operation, raster operation. Uh, in some point, I think Microsoft they tried to map what they have in their GDI to, to the protocol. Uh, you also have uh, yeah, funny bit saving. In some part of the specification, they tried really hard to save some bits of information. And in some other place, they really waste uh, space. So you, yeah, you can feel that, that it was not written by a single person. Uh, also, all the specifications are public, but uh, you must read between the lines when uh, interpreting the specification. So sometimes you, yeah, most of the time you you have, you have to to refer to the reference implementation, which is MSTSC, the, the Microsoft client. Uh, sometimes in the specification they lie, they they forget to to tell some uh, crucial information. Uh, and yeah, when you are an RDP developer, you. You often use uh, IDA Pro to reverse engineer the, the client. Uh, so in RDP, yeah, security used to be an option. So you, at the beginning, there were no security at all. Then they, they introduced uh, RDP for security, which is a, a kind of joke because it, it was very weak. You had that concept of a public private key. So you had that that uh, private key that was published in the specification. So you, you could have man in the middle attacks very, very easily. Uh, and um, they, they used to, to, in the protocol, you had many vector operations in the past, and now it's only codecs. So it's really just a, a matter of, of trying try to find the right codec to encode the, a, a robot map. You also have channels, which allows you to to have uh, extra functionalities. So you can use your RDP connection and do printing. You have uh, bidirectional sound. That means that you can hear the sound from the remote server, 
but you can also export your local microphone to the, to the server. We have serial port redirection, drive sharing, uh, remote coffee probably. Uh, but you, yeah, I know that some, uh, some companies, they have their, their own propri proprietary uh, protocol over the channel. So they, can, they implement their, their application over ch RDP channels. So the free RDS project, so yeah, so this is released and they are, they are patched to license. Uh, this will be published sooner. We expect to publish completely until the, by the end of the year. Uh, originally, we, we, we planned to publish that in around September, but we were a little, a little late. So you, you can find, I will give some URLs, but it's uh, some very old version of the, of the project. Uh, so yeah, so free RDS, so we, we took inspiration of uh, XRDP. But this time we are f totally based on FreeRDP, which is a, a FreeRDP implementation. And we are quite young because uh, we started this project uh, about one year ago. So what do we support in FreeRDS? So we support the, the, the different securities. So you have RDP4, you know, the one with the, which is uh, not really secure. We, we support TLS and we also support the NLA security which is the TLS base. Uh, on the encoding part, we, we support raw bitmaps encoding, we support uh, the planar codec and the remote FX codec. We also, we can handle channels with an external program to FreeRDS, so you, can, you don't need to have your channel implemented in FreeRDS, you, you really can have an external binary that, that does uh, the channel interpretation. We support session reconnection, so you can uh, reconnect on a, on a session if, it, if it's still alive. Uh, and recently we also had session shadowing, so you can, uh, you can have, a, let's say, a, a spied session and a spy watching uh, what is going on on the, on the other session. Uh, we, you can even have as many spies as you, as you wish. So how does it work in free RDPS? So we are, so really, FreeRDS does only RDP. So we have a FreeRDS that does RDP. We have the session manager that handles authentication, authorization, and you have the, the content provider which, uh, which creates the content to display. So typically a, a connection is, a, the, the RDP peer connects on FreeRDS. FreeRDS does the RDP negotiation deals with uh, what the RDP peer wants. Uh, we, we ask the session manager for a content provider. The session manager will fork a content provider and then we will link the two, FreeRDS and the content provider, and then uh, you will have uh, uh, mouse moves and, and keystroke that are sent to the content provider and the content provider answering with uh, some graphics content. So in practice, so we, we have FreeRDS, which is written in C, the session manager in C++. We build with CMake. We are massively using FreeRDP. Uh, for now, we are running only on Linux, but we're, we're targeting uh, any platform, including Windows. Um, for messaging between all these components, we use Protobus, Thrift, and uh, Dbus. At some point, we use Dbus because we need to have some system-wide notification. So, for example, when when a user connects, and uh, we need to we need to notify that uh, a new session has been created. And we are also providing a, a library that helps building content providers. So, under the hood, so between FreeRDS and the content provider, we have a, a socket which is used for signaling. Uh, we send me mouse moves and key press over that socket. And we also have a shared memory between, uh, between the two, so we can share the frame buffer and the list of damage that have been uh, reported by the content provider. Uh, so at connection between FreeRDS and the content provider, we have some kind of the negotiation. So 
we uh, so both can agree of uh, on the format for the shared memory essentially. So we send the version, the screen depth, the size, the screen layout, <laughs> the sorry, the keyboard layout. So we can the content provider can can know which layer, which remote layout uh, has the peer. And yeah, the content provider answers with uh, information useful for for the for the for free RDS. So in free RDS, we the frame generation is free RDS uh, initiated. So that means that when free RDS wants to send a frame to the RDP peer, it first sends a sync request to the content provider. Into the content provider, we'll update the shared memory. So we will update the frame buffer, the list of damage, and then we, it will reply with will, it will reply re, with a sync reply uh, message. And then FreeRDS will take care of encoding the damage region and uh, yeah, using the right codec and, uh, and touching. So what you should remember: so FreeRDS does only RDP, and uh, we have the content provider that creates the visible content. So let's talk about uh, a special content provider, which is XRDS. So XRDS, it's, at, it's uh, an X11 content provider. So it's headless. It's ju really just like X11 VNC. Uh, currently, on, on the code side, it's, it's some kind of free RDS DDX. We are based on uh, XORD 1.15, but yeah, that's uh, that's a choice. But we, it would run also on a recent version, uh, and of course, you we linked again the helper content, the content provider helper library. So, on that uh, on that picture, you can see how how it how it is going between uh, the peer free RDS and XRDS. The funny thing is that. If you if you're using the SHM extension of uh, X, you will have uh, some shared memory between XRDS and its X client, and also between XRDS and FreeRDS. Uh, what do we support? So we have one mouse, which is a client a client side pointer. So the pointer is drawn by the, the by the RDP client, not by X. Uh, we have one keyboard that we try to map uh, as good as we can to the remote RDP uh, keyboard. We have a functional X render. That means that you, you can use your favorite X render program and, under X and uh, having the, the screen resize on the remote RDP peer. But we also support the fact that the RDP peer can initiate a resize and it works on, uh, on X. Uh, we have an external program that uh, that does the clipboard. So in in RDP, you can uh, you can share your local clipboard with the remote clip clipboard. So we feed the X clipboard with the, the RDP one, and we also support for connections. So you your uh, the lifetime of your X session is not bound to the fact that you're connected with uh, with your RDP peer. So you can really reconnect and uh, re recover your your total session. So yeah, we are here, a room full of X developers. So yeah, you're probably thinking, yeah, too easy. You just write the X server boilerplates. Sorry. Okay. And uh, write the X server boilerplates. Uh, Use uh, the glue code. Use the, the <laughs> use the use the the library to help writing content provider. And yeah, you're done. Piece of cake. But of course, when if you're if I'm here, it's because it, it didn't went so well. So some troubles we had. So first, yeah, this is a French joke. So we really had trouble <laughs> with X render. So we had to fake mod lines, timing. Right fake ED block. Of course, use the right unit when you when you or you really have troubles. We had some race condition between uh, the client, the X render initiated resize and the RDP client initiated resize. Uh, and at the end, we also had to shut up the desktop environment because you know 
GNOME, it, uh, when you connect on GNOME, it, it tries to restore your last resolution. So it's, uh, yeah, the, you, we, we set the current, we, we set the right resolution, which is the, the resolution of the RDP peer, and you add the GNOME in your back that tries to restore the, the last resolution you had, which, uh, yeah. Which is very problematic. So we have to do, we have to do some tricks to to shut up to shut up GNOME or to shut up uh, XFC, which uh, which does the same. We have we had some other troubles with uh, an application that was updating the the, the pointer shape like uh, ten times a second. So it was uh, it was on a slow network bandwidth, and uh, the pointer updates were uh, hitting all the bandwidth. So we had to implement some kind of cache to not resend the pointer shape if uh, it didn't change. Uh, we, we also had a problem that I call damage is not damage. So we had that old flash player that we, we couldn't update. The, and when you were pressing pause, it was constantly updating the, it was sending some damage if, even if nothing was changing. So we have implemented a, a very trivial frame comparison algorithm so you see it just split the, the damage in, in small ties, compute the real damage, and uh, send the real damage. So we, are, we really had nice gains with, uh, with that one, because even we, when looking at a full screen video, you can have like 20% gain. So yeah, so about XRDS, so yeah, we have something uh, totally functional with, uh, with uh, with FreeRDS. And as, as we have implemented most of the tricks in, uh, in FreeRDS, this, 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 this has been gains for other content providers. So let's see another content provider, which is uh, a free, the FreeRDS compositor. So what is it about? It's a, it's a FreeRDS backend for Western. So right now it's quite advanced prototype. At some point it's uh, more advanced than the RDP compositor. And yeah, you can have your remote desktop running Western, which is, which is nice, kind of nice. Uh, on the technical side, so like for the RDP compositor, we use uh, the Pixman render to, uh, to build uh, the picture. We have one seat. So we map uh, the, the remote peer as, as a seat in, uh, in FreeRDS, except if you're using shadowing. So we, I, have a, I have some code uh, where you can have uh, one cursor by, uh, for the spy session, and uh, you also have one seat per spy looking at the spy. So you, you, can, you can have an application, some kind of whiteboard ap application when you have uh, one cursor per uh, RDP peer connected. And uh, yeah, and we try, just like for the RDP compositor, we try to map uh, as good as we can the, the RDP layout uh, for the keyboard. Uh, so yeah, so free RDS, the, the free RDS compositor works. So yeah, you should really give it a try. Uh, and what could we do? So some future work. So. Yeah, we are really thinking about adding multi-touch for, for Western IX RDS. From what I've heard, uh, I think perhaps it, for, it will probably be a, more, a little more difficult for X RDS because I think multi-touch is not very well integrated in, uh, in X. Uh, we could also have a keyboard for Western, for Wayland. We, uh, we, have, not, we, have, done, we have not done it yet. And uh, yeah, the more recent uh, RDP server, they, they are using, to do graphics, they are using a, an EGFX channel, which is something uh, that you have with the, the last RDP version. So do you have any questions?